Qualifying in Baku never disappoints. Well done, Baku. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2022 Azerbaijan Grand Prix qualifying with a little bit of telemetry analysis. My name is Blake and welcome to Break F1. After spending 10 years in Formula One as a performance engineer, I'm here to share my insight into the world of Formula One and some data analysis with you. I'm gonna to try to keep this video short and to the point, but we're gonna focus on the top 10 of the Baku qualifying session. But even inside the top 10, there are some pretty staggering differences in performance across the teams. Charles Leclerc takes away his sixth pole position in eight races this season. He's out qualified his teammate Carlos signs at every race so far. All weekend, we knew the Ferrari were going to be strong, but after what we saw in FP2, we weren't quite sure if the Red Bulls had an answer for them. Russell brings home the Mercedes in fifth ahead of his teammate Lewis Hamilton in seventh. Gasman puts the Alpha Tauri in P6 ahead of Tsunoda in P8, and Seb manages to drag the Aston Martin through Q1, Q2, all the way into Q3 coming in P9 just ahead of Fernando Alonso in the Alpine. That being said, Sepp has never finished lower than fourth place in the Baku Grand Prix, so let's, let's see what he does tomorrow. Unfortunately, the McLarens didn't make it out of Q2, and we're just going to focus on the top 10 today in this video. Now, this is a chart of the pace for everybody in qualifying. Each line on this bar chart represents their percentage delta from the pole, and I've also included each of the driver's lap times. I'm gonna skip straight over to the team's qualifying ranking. Uh, if you wanna pause the video and come back and look at this later, go ahead. Now, to put this all in perspective, the Red Bulls have qualified 0.3% off of the Ferraris, which is, which is pretty typical for the season. Now look at the gap between the Ferrari and the Mercedes of Russell. I mean, the, the Mercedes is all the way back at 1.3% away. That's the biggest gap we've seen. I think the data is gonna make this pretty clear why. We've got Ferrari and Red Bull clearly front runners of this race, and then Mercedes leading the best of the rest, ahead of the Alfa Tauri, Aston Martin, Alpine, McLaren, Alfa Romeo, Haas, and the Williams all the way back at 3.3%. Let's start off by taking a look at Leclerc, the pole sitter versus Perez coming in at P2. Now, if you're new to this kind of data, at the top we have car speed, in the middle we have throttle, and down here we have the lap time delta. Here's Perez at neutral, and then you can just see the lap time that Leclerc is gaining throughout the whole lap, the start of the lap, and the end of the lap. The DRS straights are here, here, and obviously down to turn one. The Ferrari is just a monster through all of the corners. He's gaining lap time hand over fist over Perez in basically every part of the track. There's actually very little lap time difference in the straight line. Uh, the Red Bull look like they have a little bit stronger DRS than the Ferraris, but not too much difference here. Now, there's not really anything too interesting about this overlay for the most part. Leclerc got his lap together, A, uh, and the Ferrari's just a monster. They've got great braking, they've got great low speed traction, they've got great cornering grip. Now, the only question I've got, are we gonna see another race like Jetta where the Red Bulls can attack and the Ferraris just don't have an answer? This, you know, this straight line speed difference with the DRS seems like it could be the case, but let's see. Now let's take a quick look at how Perez bested Verstappen again this weekend. Last week, we talked about how Perez really loves a car with a little bit of stability and understeer and Max needs that sharp front end in the low speed to get the car pointed. This looks like another low speed circuit that's played into Checo's favor. This one is not so clear actually, because it looks like the two cars are running completely different setups, but there's something a little bit fishy going on here. Uh, from what I can tell, the drivers are running the same setup. However, Max was 100 to 300 meters behind Russell for the entire lap. So you can see here, Max getting a toe down to turn one, a toe down to turn four, um, losing quite a bit of time through four, five, six. Maybe that's because he was pretty close to Russell. Um, then at the end of the lap, Max is gaining several tenths in the straight. But for the most part, whatever Max gained on the straights, he lost through the corners. Uh, in the end, Perez coming out half a tenth ahead of Verstappen in this qualifying session. Now, if you were watching the broadcast, you probably heard some commotion from Verstappen as he was leaving the garage for his final run in Q3. You heard Max ask his engineer, why am I going out first? To which GP replied, there's an issue with the other car. Many teams alternate the driver that goes out first every weekend to make sure that each driver gets an advantage of having the toe at every other race. Just another little bit of evidence for the tinfoil hats out there thinking everybody's favoring Verstappen. The, the team is looking after both of the drivers right now. Now let's look at Sainz versus Leclerc. Sainz botched his second push lap in Q3, which really gives us not much to compare to. We're looking at Sainz's first push lap in Q3 versus Leclerc's final lap. Realistically, there's a huge amount of track evolution and Sainz was just building up in his first run to try and get a good lap for his second run, but um, he ruined the lap quite early. Leclerc just faster than Sainz everywhere throughout the lap. 
No differences I can see in setup or anything else. There's not really too much to say about this overlay. He's outqualified signs in every qualifying session this season. Signs not getting his second run in Q3, which cost him a shot at pole and puts him behind the Red Bulls. Now, from the Mercedes garage, we have not heard too much good news this weekend. And unfortunately, after qualifying, I don't have much else too exciting for any Mercedes fans. So let's just have a quick look at how Mercedes qualified against the Ferrari. There's just not really anywhere on the track that Mercedes is faster than the Ferrari. Through every corner, Ferrari is just gaining lap time, gaining lap time throughout the whole lap. For the most part, maybe they were matched in the final corner, but this is probably just Leclerc giving a little bit of margin. Um, the Ferrari faster in a straight line, maybe Russell with a little bit of a toe in a couple of places, but fortunately for the Mercedes, they've got a little bit of straight line speed to play with, so there's not too many teams that they should be worrying about defending against, except for maybe the Alpines, but I'll get to that in a second. Now that we're going into the midfield teams, I'm going to show the comparisons to Russell. Up next, we've got Gasly versus Russell. Between Gasly and Russell, one's faster in one place, the other's faster in the other place. Not too much of rhyme or reason to it in terms of overall grip. The cars look similar in terms of straight line speed. Uh, I think we do agree that Russell might have had a little toe down to turn four, but there's really not too much in it. Um, I think we saw Gasly was a little bit inconsistent in putting a lap together in P2 and P3. I think more of this here just cost uh, Gasly a shot at a better position. Uh, the cars looked fairly well matched in terms of a race. We will definitely have a race on between the Alpha Tauri and the Mercedes. Now, the Vettel lap was not particularly interesting, but I will say that Seb has never finished lower than fourth in Baku, even in an Aston, so let's not write him off yet. The last thing I wanted to touch on was the Alpine of Alonso. El Plan could be a massive threat to the midfield fight tomorrow in the race, and here's why. Here is Alonso in blue versus Russell in red. For the most part, in Sector 2, Alonso not looking particularly confident and just losing a little bit of lap time everywhere to Russell. But this being a street circuit, not as hard to overtake here as Monaco, but look at the straight line speed on the Alpine in qualifying with DRS on. This car is a rocket ship. This long straight is going to leave these teams with the lower top speed advantage so compromised compared to the Alpine. I think we're going to see Alonso and Alcon tomorrow getting involved and it's gonna be pretty exciting. So let's see what happens. I hope you've enjoyed this quick analysis video that I've rushed out right after qualifying. If you did enjoy it, do be sure to subscribe to the channel. Well done, Baku. We'll see you tomorrow.